What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're back with a brand new edition of My Damn Thoughts, and we are breaking down WWE Elite Series 103. Now, yes, we have already done surgery on this wave. Typically, we don't do a surgery video on a wave before the My Damn Thoughts episode, just because I want the figure to be in its pretty much factory state, right? I want it to look exactly how it did when it came out of the factory from Mattel. But in this case, man, I wanted to get that surgery done. So, you know what? We had to just build a bridge and get over it this time. But here today, we have Elite Series 103. I feel like a lot of people were pretty happy with this set. I remember when it was first shown off, a lot of people, before the figures were shown, like when we just knew the lineup, when we just knew who was going to be in the lineup, a lot of people said they were skipping this wave, and then when we saw the figures at WrestleMania in LA, at the Superstore, everybody said, you know what, Brad, maybe I should grab these figures, and I think that's kind of where a lot of people stood, but my damn thoughts, we're going to break down a WWE Elite or Unrivaled from AEW wave in this series of videos. And today we have WWE Elite Series 103. So let's dive into it, man. Let's start off with my first thoughts. I think I was with a lot of other people. I didn't say I was skipping this set, but until we actually saw the figures, it's kind of hard to make a judgment on the wave. Character in the wave, I was like, yeah, we have a lot of like current guys in here. It's not like, you know, no flashbacks really besides Stardust. Everything else is pretty much modern day. But then, but then when we saw this wave at WrestleMania, I said, oh yeah, I'm all in on this shish, man. These look fantastic, especially the Street Profits over there. I was mind blown. Super updated, way better versions than their first go around. So this set was a massive W, I think. Now let's roll into who I think the shelf warmer in this set's gonna be. Now, this one was kind of tough for me at first. You know, I was thinking about it. Like, if you guys, I'm pretty sure somewhere across the country, there are a pair of Elite 81 Street Profits probably chilling there. And you know what, Brad? That's probably the case. The packaging was kind of ugly. They, like, blended in with the packaging. Angelo Dawkins looked terrible. Montez Ford was very... Like, he was very similar to this, but it wasn't as good as this, nearly. It just wasn't. It wasn't a horrific figure, but it definitely wasn't setting the world on fire. So that took me a second. Then I was like, Stardust, is anybody going to want that? And then I finally decided that I think it's going to be Liv Morgan. If you guys are unaware, her, her Elite 85 figure was pretty shelf-warm worthy. And I don't know if that was just an overabundance of the figure at the store or what the case was, but I went with Liv Morgan. I think this figure is going to show form out of the whole set. The head sculpt, I did switch the head sculpt. This is the Elite 85 head sculpt. I just put that on there. I think it looks better in my opinion. But I think she will be the shelf form in the set. Still a damn good figure. But then again, she comes with a championship and a money in the bank. That could help her out. Ooh, when you, th when you consider that, Stardust might be the shelf warmer, man. He might be the shelf warmer. When you consider accessories, I didn't think about that. Bobby Lashley's going to have a U.S. title. Roman Reigns is going to have a universal title. Stardust, you don't have a title, do you, Brad? You have a ladder, though. I don't know. I think Stardust might be the shelf warmer. Then I started thinking about the hottest figure in the set, and I think at the end of the day, it's either going to be Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley, or Montez Ford. I just think that these jerseys are going to be really appealing to a lot of people. I think they're really going to want these profits, but Roman Reigns is the tribal chief, man. If there's a Roman Reigns there and people don't already have a Roman Reigns, they're grabbing the Roman Reigns, like no doubt about it. He looks beautiful. I think it's a fantastic relief, and I know it's just a repaint and there's not a lot of stuff going on with it, but at the end of the day, that's the tribal chief over there. I think he's going to be the hottest figure in the set. That's just the way it is, man. He's going to be the hottest. He's going to fly off shelves as the tribal chief does. So I went with Roman Reigns as the hottest figure in the set, and if you guys have any disagreements, if you think that a certain figure is going to be a shelf warmer or a certain figure is going to be the hottest figure in the set. I would love to know those things. You know, you, you can challenge me down in the comment section below. Next up, we have the chase in this set. The chase in this set is actually going to be Stardust, which is a figure that I have not found yet. I will be tracking it down. I have this kind of game that I play where I, tr I take my chances at retail for the chases. I try to find those things in the wild. And usually it doesn't really work out for me, you know, but uh, it's, it's fun. You know, I get a kick out of it, but... It is like the blue, silver, and black Stardust. I personally think I like the WrestleMania 32 gear more. I just like the sleeveless look, and I like the fix up here with like the seamless or the laceless boots going on. I really enjoy the Stardust figure, and so he is the chase, but I think I like the regular version better. So Stardust is our chase figure, and then we're getting into our best head sculpt. Now, this one was kind of challenging, and I'm going to break this all down for you right here to kind of tell you why a certain figure won this. And honestly, like the more I think about it, it's probably not the best head sculpt, but at the end of the day, I think it's it's a toss-up between two. And I, I don't know, actually, I think I just changed my mind just now, but this is my this is kind of where I broke it down. Montez Ford, it's the same head sculpt as the Elite 81. The Liv Morgan head sculpt, this is not the current one, but I didn't like it. I thought it was missing some likeness. I like the Elite 85 better. Stardust is just the Elite 32 Cody Rhodes repainted. Bobby Lashley's is new, but it's not the best. It's kind of just like a straight-faced Bobby, and I, I don't know. I, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. And then this is the 
Amazon exclusive Tribal Chief vs. Beast Incarnate 3 pack Roman head sculpt, and it's pretty much the same figure anyway, just with some added boot deco. But I didn't want to use a repeat head sculpt, so I went with Angelo Dawkins. I know he's yelling, but I think it still captures his likeness very well. I think that when you get in here and look at it, I think it does look like Angelo Dawkins. And if you didn't want to roll with this, you got to go with Bobby Lashley, personally. But uh, I like the way the hair's sculpted in there. He's got a nice fade in there. The face sculpt looks like Angelo Dawkins. He's got a good beard in there. I like the Angelo Dawkins the most, I think, as far as head sculpts are concerned in this wave. And that's just the way it's cookie and crumbling. I don't know what I just said. Now, let's get into our best articulation in this setup. That is the next category that we have here. I went with Stardust, man. The Stardust is on ball joints. He has double jointed arms. He's got a good ab crunch. He, he feels good in the hand. He poses around. He can do any pose you really need. Uh, there's a lot of guys in this set that can pose around well as well. Bobby Lashley can pose around well. Roman Reigns can pose around well. I think these two guys aren't as good as posing as the other three, but they can also pose as well. But then we got to get on the flip side of it what the worst articulation is, and that is going to be Liv Morgan, man. Liv Morgan, the only reason that she has the worst articulation is simply just because she's a women's figure, so women's figures always have, like, worse articulation than the men. They never have the ab crunch deal, and so that is what holds those figures back. When it comes to the articulation, she is going to be at the bottom. That's just the way the cookie crumbles again. You know, sometimes that's just how it be. Now let's get into the best accessory in this set, and this one was pretty damn easy, bro. This one was pretty damn easy. It's going to be these Street Profit jerseys. I mean, honestly, it's not even close. It's not even close. These jerseys are fantastic. They have no Velcro on them. They look incredible. They're beautiful. They get all. They check all the boxes. No Velcro on there. They're stretchy material. Both of them are not the same size either. They actually made them resize so that, you know, the bigger one is on Angelo and the smaller one's on Montez. They really outdid themselves with these Street Profits figures, man. And they're easily the best accessories in the bunch. I also added another chain there and switched out their shield. Like, I did some stuff to them, but uh, standalone, they're still damn good. And so, uh, their, their jerseys are easily my favorite in the set. Like, they're so damn good. But nonetheless, man, I think that pretty much wraps up everything except for ranking this set. So, what, what I'm going to do is go ahead and wipe these guys off the planet. And then now, we're going to rank this set from worst to best. So if you guys are unaware on how we rank our figure sets when it comes to My Damn Thoughts and breaking these figures down, different things come into account when we are breaking down a set and try to figure out what the best figures are in each wave. And so excitement level for the figure, posability, feel in hand, likeness to the character on TV, posability, head sculpt, all these different things play a role when we are determining what the best figure is in each set. So coming to the bottom of the ranking, man, I went with Roman Reigns. And I love the Tribal Chief, and I love Roman Roman Reigns, man, it's literally nothing against him personally, but this is the same exact figure with a little bit of stuff added to the boots. It's a great figure, but, uh, you know, I, I, it's the same exact figure over and over again. If they would have gave this guy the appropriate head sculpt that I think he should have, he'd probably be up there. I'm going to be honest with you. I think he'd be up there, and I think that at SDCC, we're going to see a newly sculpted torso for Roman Reigns, so we will have to see about that. Coming in at the number five spot, I did go with Bobby Lashley. I went with Bobby Lashley, very similar to Roman Reigns, and I don't really like this gear, man. I don't like how it's like black and yellow and then gold added in there. I just, I'm not the biggest fan of that gear specifically. It's a solid figure. I wasn't the biggest fan of the head sculpt, but there's some differences going on. It's just not good differences. If this was the all white gear and he had a, like a yelling head sculpt or something, it would have jumped significantly probably. But this is just where I stand on these two guys. Coming in at number four, we have our Liv Morgan figure. Very good figure. I think it's a great Liv Morgan. It's the best Liv Morgan so far, I'd say. Double jointed arms, double jointed knees, great attire, great accessories. Head sculpt wasn't the best, but I still think that it, I liked it better than these other two figures. Coming in at the number three spot, I went with the Elite Stardust figure. I enjoyed the hell out of this figure, man. This figure right here is so damn good. It feels good, looks good. Maybe a different head sculpt would have bumped him up a little bit. Giving him the right boots would have bumped him up a little bit. He had laced boots, which is not accurate to the event itself, but very happy to have this figure. I was begging Mattel for years for it. Finally got it, so that is nice. And then coming in at 2 and one we have the Street Profits. And for me personally, I'm going to go with Angelo Dawkins at number 2, and I'm going to go with Montez Ford at number 1. I love these figures, man. These are two of my favorite figures all year. The Miami Vice gear, it looks like MDT. This is like, this is one of my favorite gears before we had it in figure form. So, I know they had John Cena shoes, but I switched those out, and now they are just, they're just awesome, man. They look amazing, they feel immaculate, they're great. The accessories here, this is like the standard of what a Mattel figure should be. The only reason that uh, I wouldn't really like them is the Cena shoes and then no shin cut. The no shin cut does bother me a lot. However, this is where my ranking is. I would love to know where your ranking of this set is down in the comment section below, but that is 
pretty much going to wrap up my damn thoughts on WWE Elite Series 103. Now, just remember, these aren't the right thoughts. These are just my damn thoughts. So, that's what I think about WWE Elite Series 103, man. Apparently, WWE Elite Series 104 is shipping, and it, it should be at my door probably this week, but I am out of town and will not be able to review it probably until the weekend. So, I do apologize for that unless I get somebody to ship it to me on vacation. We'll see about that, and I guess you guys will see what comes of that, but... Nonetheless, that is going to wrap up my damn thoughts, man. Before we get out of here, huge shout-out to our patrons of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate those guys more than anything. You guys are the absolute best. Always appreciate you guys so much. If you guys are interested in becoming patron members, check the link in the description below. But that is going to wrap up my damn thoughts for WWE Elite Series 103. I'd love to know where you guys stand down below. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at my damn toys. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time. We'll never back